Hi, and welcome to another edition of Bringing Hope to Alzheimer's. I'm Ann Frazier, and I'm sitting with my good friend, Don Minter, and he is the owner of Senior Care Authority here in Kansas City. And so tell me a little bit about Senior Care Authority. Okay. And um, you guys have a couple of you that own parts of Kansas City. Tell us about yeah. all that. Yeah, so Senior Care Authority, we have a team of senior care advisors uh, that help folks to the best outcomes and navigating all the difficult health care systems out there. Uh, I always like putting it that we meet the senior wherever they're at in their journey and devise the best next steps. So we specialize in placement assistance for independent living, assisted living, and memory care. And we also do elder care consulting for Medicaid, long-term care communities, rehabs, whatever the senior needs, we're there for them. So I concentrate in the Johnson County area in Lawrence, Topeka, mostly Johnson County. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got the partners that operate Kansas City, Missouri, Jackson, Cass County, and then uh, partners that operate up north. Mm -hmm. So we got the entire metro covered. And we also have expanded, and we've got some independent contractors working for us now. So we've got wow. a staff of four on top of the three franchisees in the area. So, yeah, it's exciting, and our growth is exciting. That is exciting. You are growing. I didn't even know that. Yeah, yeah. Very good. So let's talk a little bit about when a family contacts you, mm -hmm. and they say, I have a loved one uh, that I don't know. We probably need to look at something different. Right. Kind of take me through those steps of, of how you work and what you do. Sure. And to begin with, we have wonderful referral partners throughout the area, if I can, uh, real estate folks, uh, elder law attorneys, home care, home health, financial planners. So a lot of times they'll refer clients to us. And also our word of mouth has been really strong. Uh, I've been doing this for a little over five and a half years now. So we've got a great word of mouth out there yes. for helping our current client or our past clients. Mm -hmm. Um, so usually the referral will come through one of them or, or a family member. Um, then we do a very careful process. Usually start off with a, like a phone call, pre-screening phone call. It takes 30 to 45 minutes trying to find out where they're at clinically. Um, you know, it's important for us to understand where they're at clinically, where they're at activity of daily living wise, where they're at financially, what are they looking for in a senior community, what are they looking for in an apartment. Uh, and we do all that research very carefully. And obviously we talk about the finances as well. Right. To see what, you know, what the budgets are. Uh, we're also professionals in navigating the, some benefits that can help pay for long-term care, such as long-term care insurance, uh, the VA aid and attendance benefit. Uh, we have folks that can uh, actually analyze life insurance policies and potentially get some of those to help pay for long-term care. Uh, so we can analyze all that. Then we put that together with the income piece, and then we talk about a budget and a number of what they'd be comfortable with spending each month. Okay. So... What, also, we find out what they like to do. You know, oh. we really try to get to know the senior a little right. bit. Right. And a lot of time, it's the adult kids reaching us or reaching out to us. Mm -hmm. But we always know, want to know, like, what mom and dad like to do. And sometimes, mm -hmm. well, they've never been social, or sometimes they're off-the-wall social, but... What we find when folks get in the right environments, they really expand and really do become social, right. even if they've been an introvert their whole life. So yes. it's kind of pretty cool. But, right. Yeah. When I went through this with my parents, I didn't know you weren't doing it way back then, but I personally went out, and I think I went through about 28 to 30. Uh, I just showed up. I didn't have an appointment, and I just showed up and asked for a tour and to find out about their community. And uh, I, that's why I ended up taking care of my parents for three years, because I could not, I couldn't walk through all of that. It was like, there were all these fees and then there were like hidden fees. And I was like, I just want to know, like, what's the bottom line? Like what, you know, exactly. but, oh, they want to eat. Oh, that's this cost. Oh, they need their meds given to them. Oh, that's this, you know, there was add on after add on. It was really difficult to navigate right. for someone that doesn't understand that world. Right, and, and that's the process we streamline. You know, we go on the tours with the the, the adult kids and the loved ones themselves. Uh, a lot of times, the adult kids will want to weed it down to three to five, you know, mm -hmm. selections. Right, and then we get the parents involved, or the mom or the dad, and, mm -hmm. and find out, you know, because they obviously want to buy in on the on the scenario. They're the ones that's going to be moving in. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, that's part of our process, and. You know, it's, we try to, like I said, I streamline it. So, you know, I, a lot of times I'll do the tours myself because the communities trust me. 
trust me to do that. And you know so much about them. I do. I do. I mean, my background, and I'll get into that in a moment, but uh, you know, I can walk into a community and see what, if things are going well mm-hmm. or if things are not going well. And we, it's our job to do that research on all the communities, and there's over 130 of them in Johnson County alone. Wow. So we're constantly, you know, what might be good one week might not be good the next week. Mm-hmm. So when we get that in, we get that new client, and we're going to, well, they want to be in certain areas. So we do the demographic study, and well, we want to be within 15 minute radius of where. Right where they live now because that's where all their friends are mm-hmm. and we'll come up with those suggestions and then we'll set up the tours and then you know we'll wind it down from there but okay. uh, yeah it's a it's a definite process and uh, you know I again tours with the marketing director and marketing directors are fantastic in this town don't get me wrong so. right <laughs> yeah, you know. yeah but you kind of want to know the good the bad and the ugly yeah so know. to speak but sometimes the family doesn't want to be telling mom and dad's life story to five different communities all day long. Mm-hmm. So we, so I generally, you know, start the intro and said, you know, here we got John Smith, and you know, he's 75 years old, living at home, looking for an independent living scenario. He needs some support. He might need some medication management, uh, which some of the independent living communities can handle that with right. supportive services. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you talk about the fees. Of course, everybody wants to know. How much the bottom line gonna be yeah, that's right so independent living is generally a base or a, a rental rate um and i can go on and on forgive me if, if i no nope. talk too much you just let me know uh they generally have a rental rate uh, per month mm-hmm. um, and it's independent there's no services no staff that need to care give so that's generally what that rate is most communities have a community fee which is a one-time one time fee uh, ranges anywhere from thousand dollars up to thirty five hundred dollars mm-hmm. generally, which is one time. Uh, so second person fees that that could be one that sometimes may not be disclosed right away. Uh, but assisted living is generally where it comes in at to where you know there, there's a rental rate and then there is a level of care charge. Mm-hmm. So a lot of communities do a point system. The uh, just paying for what they need, mm-hmm. and then some communities have a base. You know. Might be five hundred fifty dollars for level one, or level two is eight hundred and fifty, and and on up. Mm-hmm. And you've got, if you have a couple, then you've got both those care charges. They okay. analyze and say that it is possible to go in at a level zero sometimes, where they don't need any extra care. Mm-hmm. Um, usually, though, in a couple scenario, one needs care, one might not. Right. You know, and, and of course, families want to stay together, so mm-hmm. it's our goal to find the right community that would would fit a, a mm-hmm. both husband and wife mm-hmm. situation. One may be in one level of care, one may be in a different level of care. Mm-hmm. We also analyze, you know, where they might be in the future. Um, so, you know, do we need to make sure that rent? place has, yeah, that they have the progression as they get worse and or older or whatever. Right, because mm-hmm. if there is a dementia diagnosis, chances are it, it's going to, you know, mm-hmm. get get worse. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, there's always things we can do. Sure. You know, when I know you've done a lot of education on. Yeah, you know, healthy eating and nutrition, and mm-hmm. I, I know you're up at the gym at what five a.m. Yeah. every day, mm-hmm. like you. <laughs> I'm eight o'clock. I'm not quite. The oh, okay, person, okay, but, uh, okay. Yeah, healthy living can definitely help. Yes, help curtail the process. Absolutely. But then again, that's that's our job to because we don't want to really have to have them move again if, if it can be helped. Oh, and absolutely. In the same community. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So let's talk about Alzheimer's and dementia clients. So. As far as that goes and placing people in memory care, what does that look like? Because since we didn't do it, because I took care of my parents until they passed. So what does that look like for the family and the process, especially, you know, if they're a little further down the road with Alzheimer's? What does what how does that scenario typically work out for you? Yeah, so we do a lot of memory care. I mean, that is probably the largest segment that we're having right now. Of course, as you know, there's you know five million people in the U.S. and mm-hmm. it's going to be up to 50 million, they say, by the year 2050. Which mm-hmm. um, and there's going to need to be more memory care communities. It's, yeah, really good communities are on wait lists, and mm-hmm. I always encourage families to get on that wait list. So that's the first conversation we have. Let's mm-hmm. you know a lot of times they're well, we're not ready to do anything yet. You know, we want to wait. We want to wait. So you know, we talk about the dangers of waiting sometimes with, you know, if there's an accident in the home, then it becomes a skilled nursing need rather than a, I'm going to say skilled nursing, that confuses people. There's so many different acronyms out there, but right. like a long-term care need, mm-hmm. so many 
you know, then it, that changes that equation where, you know, we're talking about assisted living memory care type communities that are apartment-like atmospheres, not medical models, that kind of thing. Correct. So, you know, a lot of times it's, it's a couple scenario where the, the spouse has been a caregiver for forever. And it takes their toll being the caregiver. Mm-hmm. And I know you run caregiver groups as well, and you yep. know this story very well. I do. Um, but, you know, we always sit doesn't hurt to have a plan B, you know, and we can always come up with home care resources for folks if they want to stay in their home as long as they can, which mm-hmm. we totally encourage that. Mm-hmm. But if it gets to a point where safety is the factor, where they're wandering out of the home and not being safe and there's, you know, unsafe conditions in the home, uh, it, it's time to start that research. Right. It's never too early right. to do that. Well, and That's the first thing we teach. Yeah. Well, and I love that because... What, what we found when when we moved back to town from um, Arizona, um, when we moved back, I people who have Alzheimer's and dementia, they do what's called rising to the occasion. So when we would come in and visit for a weekend, yeah, they would repeat and we'd see little things, but we we're like, yeah, but they're doing pretty good. Yeah. And it wasn't until we moved back and we actually moved in with them for a while uh, while we were figuring out what we were doing and I remember calling my brother and sister and saying, uh, Houston, we have a problem. Like it's they because they just couldn't keep that level of keeping it together for that long of a period of time. And I started seeing kind of behind the curtain what was really happening. And I think that's one thing that is difficult for families because they might just drop by and see mom or dad or both of them, you know, for a day or a couple hours here and there, and and they don't sometimes get to see the full picture. Right, because there is good days and there's bad days. Correct. And a lot of times the spouse or the loved ones are scapegoats. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I always ask, is your loved one treating other people like they're treating you? You know, like a caregiver coming in. And it's usually, no, they're real nice to them, but a lot of times this, the spouse is definitely the scapegoat mm-hmm. and they get the brunt of that. Oh, for sure. So, you know, so let's say we're doing the, the tours and the family decides, yes, we want to proceed with the, with the memory care community. Mm-hmm. There's lots of different ways to transition from home to a memory care scenario. Because it's difficult. It is difficult. Moving can set them back. Yeah, and we educate our families on all that. I've got tons of material that we talk about on Good. ways to do that. I love that. Um, you know, and, but I always say, you know your husband or your mom better than anyone, you know, How's she going to react to this? Of course, they're not going to know. It's going to be unknown. Mm-hmm. But it's a situation to where a lot of times, you know, we'll get the move set up. You know, again, we work with move managers and downsizers. Critical part is to have the apartment looking like home before they get there. Mm-hmm. So I've got professional people that, you know, they pack, unpack, unpack the apartment, and it's just beautiful for, mm-hmm. that, for that resident. Right. That way we have that. There's pictures on the wall. There's family pictures so that mm-hmm. it feels like home. Yeah, it looks like their old place. But then a lot of times I'll just tell the, the loved ones that, you know, let the community do their job. You know, that transition could be kind of, it's it's rocky sometimes it that is. first week or two, and maybe even up to 30 days. But we, we generally 99% of the time find out it always ends up, and I can say always, 99% of the time, it's always a, <laughs> usually a great transition that really is beneficial. Mm-hmm. The loved one can be a loved one again rather mm-hmm. than a caregiver, yes. which is the biggest thing. So they can go in and have a good time with their mom or dad and play games and then, you know, go home and live their lives. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of different ways to transition it. But, you know, fiblets are used. Uh, you know, there's a 10 rules of, of um, how to treat somebody with dementia. I don't have them memorized, but I always know they're, you know, I always hand that out to my clients. Agree, you know. Don't disagree. He always agree. Of course. And redirection is the biggest mm-hmm. thing. If somebody starts to get agitated, the communities are do a fantastic job at redirecting that individual because the community will do a care plan. They're going to know exactly what the routines are mm-hmm. for that senior morning, all the way up to bed. If they get up at night, you know, they'll have a plan for that. And it's all about redirection. And usually with something that they either used to like to enjoy or they like to enjoy now. Mm-hmm. And we call it unmet needs, not behaviors. So somebody's telling you, they always call it behaviors. I, I can't stand that. It's it's unmet needs. And there was a director of nursing that taught me that term a few years ago. And I thought, man, that is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. That is good. Um, 
what percentage of people that you guys place here in Kansas City, the greater metro area, um, have some form of dementia or Alzheimer's? You know, probably 50% of the assisted living folks have some form of dementia. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the biggest differentiator between assisted living, being able to live in an assisted living community as opposed to a memory care is usually the wander risk okay. factor. And then as the disease, if it gets really advanced, then people totally forget how to do any activities of daily living. So you need specially trained staff mm -hmm. for that. So that, that'd be your memory care. But, you know, everybody's trained on dementia, even in assisted living. Uh, they, every community has in-service, even independent living. Mm -hmm. They have in-services once a month. Yes. Talking about all those type of things. And they have a specific subject to keep the staff, the staff current on, mm -hmm. you know, what's going on with that. But, you know, percentage-wise, you know, I used to be a food and beverage director for Brandon Woods at Adam Lawrence for, for 12 years. And it, it came to the point where independent living was the new assisted living. Mm. Assisted living was the new memory care. It kind of, because that's kind of how the aging population was, mm -hmm. you know, with all the baby boomers, you know, get 10,000 a day, you know, the population's really getting up there yeah. to where that, that is a concern. But, mm -hmm. but you know, probably 60%. 70% of the folks that I deal with have some form mm -hmm. of dementia. Mm -hmm. And it may not be diagnosed yet, um, but there's some, you know, there's there's a difference between cognit normal cognitive decline for seniors and there's and then being diagnosed with a dementia diagnosis. Sure. And there's a million different, well, not a million, there's a lot. 30 <laughs> different types of dementia, Alzheimer's only being one of those. Correct, correct. So um, when you place people and you've walked through that scenario, do you follow up with the families afterwards and keep in touch with them? Yeah, we're, we're advocates for life. Good. So, yeah, we do the move-in. You know, obviously I'm involved with the move-in and, you know, what most of, a lot of the time I'm the one coordinating it and getting all that taken care of. Uh, and then, we, yeah, we follow up with the families constantly mm -hmm. the move-in. Yeah. And then we're there as a resource when they need us for mm -hmm. anything. Do you then follow up like six months, a year, like every six months then just to check in with the family, see how they're doing? Just Yeah, I'd say, yeah, if it's initially, I'm going to do a lot of follow up, you know, that mm -hmm. first couple sure. of months, uh, you know, how's mom doing? And uh, yeah, that's, so it's really tight there. But, mm -hmm. you know, once we, it looks like community, you know, the community needs to do their job and, and they do their job. Sure. Like if they're not doing their job, I'm going to hear about it with yes. the family. Okay. And then I have played you know, involved with, uh, you know, getting involved in some of those care meetings. Mm -hmm. If a family's not happy about something and, right. oh, the food guy left last week and the food's just not good anymore. Um, I hear that allegation. Food's food, important. Food is number one. Food is important. Food yes, is it number is. number one. Okay. But yeah, we were with them the whole journey. Okay. As far as fees go, um, as far as what you guys do, mm -hmm. are there fees? And if so, tell us about that. Yeah, so for independent living, assisted living, memory care, private pay scenarios, and we do also have some Medicaid scenarios if they have a certain amount of private pay, uh, could be months, could be a couple of years, uh, then, you know, the communities will generally take care of us out of their marketing budgets for okay. that. So we're, we're okay. general partners of the communities. Okay. So we offer this at no charge for our clients. Okay. Um, we also have a consulting umbrella. Mm -hmm. So if there is long-term care that is needed, like to find a nursing, I don't like using the word nursing home, but just so everybody understands, if somebody needs a nursing facility, mm -hmm. and I don't like facility word either, but here I am using it. Uh, but just so everybody understands, nursing facility is like a long-term care nursing home scenario. Right. Uh, they're a Medicare-governed community, so they don't pay referral fees okay. to, to us. So we do do a, a flat fee for that, um, depending on, but we're currently charging $950 for just a flat fee, skilled nursing, long-term care placement. Okay, okay. It's just not as easy as it, it never was easy, but now it is very difficult finding beds that are available. Mm -hmm. And we do the same analysis with those clients, you know, find out where they're at clinically and I'll take, you know, uh, get HIPAA and all that medical records to me and I'll farm, not, I'm gonna say farm, uh, direct them out to appropriate communities. Sure. And then they say yay or nay, we can accept clinically. And then we'll, then I'll contact the family and say, okay, they can accept clinically. Let's go take a look. Mm -hmm. And then we'll tour those communities with them. Mm -hmm. And we've done, we've done quite a few together. 
Man. And we've had some very interesting uh, cases, haven't we? We sure have. <laughs> I tell you, that, that first couple of years in business, uh, yeah, it's like I learned so much. Yes. You know, so pretty well schooled on all of it. But, yes. Yeah, I'm not an expert, but I have the experts. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. At my, at my yes. Not disposal. Uh, just I have my experts right. that I can consult. Uh, Absolutely. Business. Yeah. No, it's I can say that you guys have done a fantastic job with everybody we've sent to you. And uh, so I know that you guys do a great job. And, and Senior Care Authority is it's a franchise. So people who are listening to this that are in other cities, other states, they could look up because Senior Care Authority is a great company with a great reputation. Yep. And it's growing. And I think we're up to 70, 70 some franchisees mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. So most of the major metropolitan areas are covered. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, we're doing a new thing too. We're trying to get into corporations and be part of their EAP programs. Oh, wow. So, you know, and again, a lot of these, like Garmin, for example, we're, we're doing a lunch and learn, a series of lunch and learns with them uh, coming up, six of them and it, to be exact. And they're gonna stream it all the way through North America. So obviously we need to have representation in different cities uh, to be able to field that kind of Okay. Thing. So we wanna, cause our consulting services, our placement services are outstanding for those employees to help navigate with their parents. And mm -hmm. again, you know, we don't charge for that placement piece. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's really, like you said, the population is getting older and they're living longer. So we are seeing more dementias and so forth. And like you said, just kind of some natural progress progression of um, just what happens as we get older. So yeah, I love it. So how did you get into this? Tell me a little bit about your passion for Alzheimer's and for older people. Yeah, so I was running Red Lobster restaurants. I actually opened the one over at 95th and Metcalf and been in the restaurant business for 30 plus years. And when I was had that job as a general manager, you know, 130 employees and of course a lot of headaches with all of that, um, my dad developed Alzheimer's. So he had a trigger event where he pulled his car out in the middle of an intersection and had 85 stitches in his head at 85 years of age. So that was a trigger event and he lived a couple hours away from me. So somebody, you know, the um, relationship I was in said, you know, Brandon Woods is hiring for a food and beverage director. And I'm going, I don't know anything about special diets or anything like that. And they're going, oh no, that, you'd be great at that. So I was kind of looking for a way to get out, out of the restaurant grind. And uh, yeah, I got the job with Brandon Woods and, you know, we started and, you know, the, my purpose for that job was, well, maybe I can get this job and move my dad into in here so I can keep an eye on him. Well, my dad was more of a Medicaid scenario, which didn't quite work out that way, but I did manage to get him closer and, you know, um, I was the only adult child. So navigating all that with him and I had to find him a community at that time. And, um, you know, but that's, my heart is very close with with the disease, mm -hmm. um, you know, we do support Alzheimer's Association through sponsorships, and we do have an event that we do at, at the end of in September. I don't know what what day we're going to do it yet, but everybody, stay tuned. We'll get that out there. Yep. And of course, we love supporting your event, right? I the remember, gala. I remember first meeting you, the gala. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, your your heart's definitely gold, and you know, we're we're two of a kind when we, it comes to we are. Care of we are just in the in the things that we've because as a real estate agent as well as an advocate for people with Alzheimer's and dementia as we've worked together I mean there's times when you and I have both put a lot of time and effort into things with with no return which is is okay because our heart was in the right place and and we did the right thing for seniors because seniors can be so taken advantage of and I think that I always use the example, you know, I walked in one time and my dad was on the phone and somebody uh, was getting him signed up for college courses and I was livid. So it, it just, it's a very, very easily, easy to take advantage of people who have yeah, a form of dementia. Put more efforts into doing positive, constructive things mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, yeah. I'm with you. Don't get me worked up. I'm yeah. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Well, let's talk about the gala. 
Yeah. So I started the gala two years ago. This will be our third one. And you guys have been huge supporters of that. They um, have uh, done a corporate sponsorship and really have jumped in and been huge cheerleaders for the event and for all the things that we stand for. And I appreciate that so much. So welcome. It's a fantastic event. It is fun. It is fun. It's a lot of work. But as you know, putting on an event, it's a lot of work, but it's so worth it. And, and getting that word out uh, to people, uh, just people know that a lot of people have Alzheimer's dementia. Um, however, I think there's a lot to be said, like you were talking about brain health, good food, there's uh, being socially active, all the different things that can help people's brains be better. Right. And uh, that's what I'm all about as well. Yeah. So uh, we line up very, very close together on those things. Yeah, so. and it is a great event. Yeah. All the way from the food to the silent auction to the live auction. Yes. That live auction was I've never really seen anything like that before. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to do, we've got, you should see what we have this year lined up. Can't wait. It's going to be a good one. So, <laughs> all right. Well, I appreciate you being here today. Is there anything else you want to say? No, we just love what we do and we're total advocates for all of our region seniors and, mm -hmm. you know, just, yeah, we love what we do. And you're very good at what you do. Thank you very so good. much. Very good. Yes. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'm absolutely. Glad to partner with you. Yes. Yes. Thanks for partnering with me. Thanks so much for tuning in today, and we'll look forward to seeing you guys next time. Take care.